Hello everyone, it's April 24th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. You just heard Carlos Salcedo's Sigadilla. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. I just want to say a thank you because this last Saturday I did my live stream 1 million views celebration event. I thought that went really well and uh, it was great to see so many of you tuning in. If you haven't watched it, you should be seeing a link where you can watch the archive and the individual music videos and, and funny videos that I released on that event can also be viewed. Maybe you want to watch them again. And I also want to mention that as part of that celebration event, I'm having a sale. All the PDF sheet music that I sell and my CD passage music for solo harp are all available at a, a discount price until the end of April. So go check that out. And finally, I wanted to just mention this, this episode is actually at a request of a patron. And right now I am very, very close to my current goal of $150 pledged per month. I'm at, I think at 146. So if we can get over that $150, I'm going to celebrate by doing another month of Harp Tuesdays. So just like there was a Harp Tuesday every month in March, um, maybe there'll be a Harp Tuesday every month in May. So if you would like to support me, I would encourage you to go and be my patron. As I mentioned, this episode is going to be on Carlos Salcedo's Sigadilla. This is from his Suite of Eight Dances, which is a very fun collection, very idiomatic. And these eight dances, they kind of vary in difficulty. Some of them are fairly easy, some of them are hard. The rumba, for example, is extremely hard. This Sigadilla kind of, it, it's, it's short, it's two pages, but it's fast. And that is its principal difficulty. It fits under the hands fairly nicely, but the speed. And so I just wanted to offer a few ideas on, on building that speed. Before I do that, maybe just kind of a general overview on some thoughts. One would be when we have something like that, right? Eighth, sixteenth, sixteenth, eighth, 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 eighth. I would, I'm going to be really aware of that second sixteenth note, the one in the weak position, that middle C. It's not on any sort of a beat. It's coming right before the big quarter note beat. So we have to give it a little extra something to make sure that we don't lose it. We don't hear, we don't go. Just, it's a little crescendo through there is really nice. Same thing when we get the triplet and I wasn't doing as quite a good job of that as I wanted. I haven't played this for a long time, uh, 20 years probably, and just looked at it today. But um, again, more on the third finger and especially second finger. A little crescendo through that whole triplet. Here, we can replace a little bit early to get a staccato effect. Oh, and uh, second bar of the third line. Again, one of the best ways to quickly muffle, probably the most efficient and the fastest way to muffle a chord you just played, is to just replace. So we do a short close and immediately replace. Kind of fun. Um, I wanted to point out, so I was having a little bit of fun here, uh, second page, as we get from the first line to the second line. He's taking advantage of the fact that he wants a C sharp in the next bar. So we've just played a C natural, but we also were about to play a D flat chord. So he's doing a little bit of a pedal glide there, which whether we whether we hear it or not, I don't know, but kind of fun. And then there's all these glisses or strumming, a lot of fun. Definitely, I think for me at least, easier than the first half of the piece. Um, so we're just sweeping, sweeping the finger closed and in quick succession two is following. I think I might do a slow motion Monday on this actually, that'd be great, great topic. Um, so look for that. And so we get a downward with a thumb, two, the sweep again. So rather than a list like this, I think this, this kind of sweeping closing of the hand is what we're looking for. Oh, uh, whatever it is. Something like that. And these. 
nice, sharp, exciting, vigorous gliss. And then for the final, I'm gonna try and muffle approximately where I feel the most sound is being generated to immediately get rid of as much as possible. And then try and get rid of some more as well, especially down here, right? So we get... Oh, sorry, what is this? There's still a little bit ring. I have to go in one direction or another, maybe. Maybe going down with both, but I, I kind of want to go up because there's a lot of sound up here. But to just try and stop that. So that's kind of an overview of the piece. And then in terms of speed, what we have to do, I think, is uh, be aware, as, as, as we're learning it, right? Any piece, are there going to be spots that really push the limits or go beyond the limits of our technique, right? So as we learn a piece, we're kind of putting the piece together, we're building, building the blocks of the piece. And if it's a piece that's not too challenging for us, all we need to do is put those blocks together, learn the, learn the piece, and spend enough time on it, and we're going to be able to play it at the speed we want. But if the piece has sections that are quite demanding, and as I say, maybe they're right on the edge of our technique, maybe they're actually more challenging or faster or harder than we can play at the moment, then what we're going to need to do is specifically concentrate on those sections because just simply learning the whole sequence is not going to help us get faster than we can currently play, if that makes sense. So in other words, yes, we want to learn the sequence well, of notes, but so for example, let's take this little um, jumping around, a lot of, to some extent, I guess, uh, but some movement, and of course we have to know that whole sequence, maybe we memorize it, maybe we don't. Right here, certainly, I think we have to memorize it so that we can be watching to make this jump up here with both hands. But we also want to be aware of, can we play, for example, at least as fast as we want to eventually play the whole thing. So if we can't do in isolation, where we're not having to worry about finding other stuff, um, we got everything set, or the first one, if we can't that do that as fast as we would like, then we're not, it doesn't matter how well we know the rest of it, we're not gonna be able to do the, the whole piece as fast as we would like. So working on that, and ideally getting something like that faster than we'd ever want to play it. So again, when we're not needing to move around, listening for the evenness and trying to make it become a reflex. One of the videos that I posted was this video of a, a wire string breaking as I was playing. And you can see, I just, I, you know, dash my body away from it on reflex. It happens without even thinking very fast. Same classic example of reflexes, touching something hot, and we just we just move away without thinking. And that's generally faster than if we have to send a signal, you know, down those nerves to our hands that, yes, play this chord. Now play two. Now play one. If we're thinking about what we're playing, we're not going to achieve the speed we, we need. It has to be more of an impulse. We have to... Have somehow have this whole sequence. We need to be able to trigger that whole sequence just by kind of thinking about it without having to consciously think about all the individual elements. So maybe that means some slow work and, and being able to get to the point where we can trust our hands to do what we need them to do. Physically, I'm going to be, as I go faster, I'm going to be thinking of smaller motion instead of a big full close and maybe a big raise. I'm kind of staying in the same spot. So if we can get that fast, maybe let's work on the left hand, being able to bounce between a couple things or... maybe in that sequence we discover that well it's pretty good but there's this one maybe I don't know um, maybe 
finding this is a problem. So. place this too early trying to again do a little bit of detective work figure out is there a particular spot that is is, is challenging is really hard and work on that in isolation um, or alternating between two so we get to practice the movement if the movements that, if simply say if simply going three to one fast and is hard great we can just work on that can we in this case I'm thinking about kind of keeping the hand not very close because I'm immediately going to open up here so more just kind of a little bit of a push instead of maybe working instead of working maybe from uh, here I'm thinking a little bit more from here just a small push oh, sorry work on that in isolation or if we know that well this is okay but not when maybe we have to or, or that other example I guess is better if one of these in isolation is okay but the whole sequence is giving us lots of problems then trying to do two in a row to work on say that left hand being able to move around and find all those different things um, so again, it's, it's, it's being a bit of a detective and thinking about if it's not, it's not as fast as I would like, what, what is it that's holding me back? And can I isolate that to, to small components possible, work on that component until I can play that as fast as I would like, until the hands again, until that becomes a reflex, an impulse, and not a, not a individual bunch of individual notes, but one, you know, we get... We get four notes happening is one thought rather than four individual thoughts. Great, if we can get that little section, then can we build onto that and get a bigger section, slightly bigger section, get that to become an impulse. Um, so that's just uh, one way perhaps to go about building speed in something like this or in anything where you're playing something that maybe is going to be pushing your technique is to take those spots that are gonna push it break them down into their smallest components that give you some problems and see if what you can do to get them faster. And again, relaxation, trying to use only the necessary motion and, and effort and movement to play those notes. And trying to keep it as relaxed as possible. Anyway, hopefully that was useful. And I will see you in two weeks' time. Cheers.